everyone today i'm in nottingham again a little village called annersley just north of nottingham and we're on what is believe it or not a fallen track bed over there we used to have annersley colliery and that opened in 1862 went through various ownerships right the way until relatively recently really in mining terms uh year 2000 that was that's when that closed and what this is i'll turn you around was a line which joined onto the former Great Northern Railway, the Lean Valley Extension. A little bit muddy, isn't it? That opened in 1892. So I believe the colliery behind us was originally served by the Midland Railway, which is just down there. That's the line that's active today and runs between Worksop and Nottingham. On the far side, we also had the Great Central Railway. So there were three duplicate lines pretty much running alongside each other, you know, from Nottingham definitely through Hucknall and on towards Mansfield. So there's our route going forwards. We're going to get onto the main line and bypass the former Newstead Colliery. There was Annersley Sheds, there was Wagon Works, there was multiple sidings. It was pretty huge back in the day. And I believe there's also a light factory down there too. Let's go see. So today's trip along the former Great Northern Railway, the Lean Valley Extension, we begin at Annersley Colliery. You've just seen me on that red curve just there. That is the old access point into Annersley Colliery. From there, we're going to cross under the active Midland Railway line and walk along where the Great Central Annersley Yard and Sheds once were and head back towards the Great Northern line where we pick that up around about where Newstead Colliery was. We'll then take the line towards Newstead We'll cross over Station Avenue and nearby where the current Newstead Station is and then head on all the way to the village of Limby. And at this point is where the Great Central used to cross. It used to cross the Midland Railway and also our Great Northern Railway that we're following today. So let's get back down there and follow this Great Northern route as best that we can. So this here is Newstead Village Bridge and it carries the active Nottingham to workshop line Mansfield's not far up there look it's got these really really long abutments it's even got the recess on the right hand side and there's the first recess as we've just visited there and before we go underneath there's another one look I suppose it is because although the bridge itself is pretty narrow the abutments are very very long therefore making it very very difficult for workmen to get out of the way should a train arrive I'm going to come out the other side now. It is so, so muddy. It's disgustingly yucky. And turn about and you can see what it looks like on the other side. So our route carries on. We'll leave the middle of the railway behind and it's still curving round to join onto the former Lean Valley track bed at Annersley Junction. And that's where the wagon works, the engine sheds and sidings and even that light factory I mentioned previously used to reside. If we'd have stayed on the Mansfield line and headed towards Nottingham just a little way down there, hang on, that's a big squidgy jump, we'd have ended up at the former Newstead Colliery. So I'm walking around one of the old slag heaps. It's probably one of the more recent ones to be fair because our Great Northern line and the Great Central to be fair, it cut through around about there and went straight on in that direction over there. 
beyond this slag heap would have been the sidings and there's these sidings and engine shed don't think there's going to be anything left at all of that but we'll walk through those former grounds and pick up the track bed off towards Limby and Hucknall and there was of course a colliery at Limby too wasn't there So right now we're probably closer to the Great Central Railway than our Great Northern Railway that we're following today. That was just pretty much beside where you can see that water just there, that great big pond. Our sidings and engine shed was just to the right of me. That closed, well the sidings closed in 1965 before the shed officially closed down on the 3rd of January 1966. On the other side is the Great Northern Line and the Midland Railway active today. It's difficult to imagine there was a former railway line here, the Great Central, because it is just an absolute mishmash. Look, take a look around of country park but with Annesley not closing until 2000 Annesley Colliery that is they probably took advantage of the land around they didn't you know have the railway in its way anymore so they could expand and make more use of the area around for the slag heaps from the collieries so we're probably about halfway along where the sidings were now the wagon repair works or the wagon shop was at the top end where we began Newstead Colliery was a little way over there that closed in 1987 and just slightly beyond that was the engine shed. And these lagoons that you see, I'll try and hold you up a bit higher, but you've already seen them from the drone shots and back there where I was just walking along. They were put there in the 1980s to benefit the coal mining in the area. Now it's getting a bit boggy just here. So I'm going to try and pick up, I think we need to be over there somewhere because Newstead Collier was just over there and the Great Northern Line shot off in that direction and the Great Central shot off over there. So to get a bit of reference, look, there's that um, windmill on the right hand side that we've just come past and our Great Northern Line is just there. We're about to head up and meet it. Newstead Colliery is on the right and the Midland Railway with the current Newstead station also resides short distance over there. Newstead Colliery shut in 1987. I'm going to get on this better bit of pavement. We should be picking up our track bed now and heading off on the former route towards Limby and on to Hucknall. But further down here was also the location of the Annesley Sheds, the great Annesley Sheds that closed on the 3rd of January 1966. Never got to see it quite a long time before I was born. I don't think we're going to see anything of its remains, but we'll at least walk over and I'll find you some historical images too to look at.
So I'm walking right next to the former sheds. When I turn you about, it's unbelievable to see what it is. The sheds are effectively appear to have been buried by years of spoil from the two nearby coal mines of Annersley and Newster. There's a lot of fir bushes in the way. I'm trying to find a little gap to poke the camera through. Let's give this a go. Let's turn you around. Can't really see, well, you can see it. It's effectively there. That was the Annersley sheds straight in front of you. And you know, we go to some of these places and you can still see where everything once was. Foundations, track beds. They're never buried underneath such a large amount of land and spoil like that. Just history gone forever. On the track bed now. I've not used the drone for a bit because we've gone through an area with uh, nesting birds. And I'm going to respect that for the sake of a few aerial camera shots I'm not going to disturb them because I love my nature so there's something coming up down here I think you can't see it on camera or I could be wrong it could just be a great big boulder here's the boulder but there was something here I'm going to turn you around and I'm going to show you this ornate bridge it's absolutely lovely look at this looks like it's iron there's some old wood at the bottom and then the riveted bases. You know what these were for? These rings in the steelwork. So I'm going to suggest it was double track width, some more riveted foundations just there, look. And again, before we see the other side with the abutments and the same iron side fencing. That's lovely, isn't it? Let's see if we can get down below and have a look. There we are. So this is Station Avenue. So if we was to pass under the bridge, we'd head up at Newstead, Newstead Village and Newstead Station. That way, a mile or so, would take us to Newstead Abbey. There's an idea for a walk and a bit of a drone round. I wouldn't mind um, visiting there, to be honest. Let's see if I can get Amy on that one. I think she'd like that. Let's step down carefully and we'll have a better look. So yeah, you'd imagine it was actually three tracks wide or built for three tracks wide, wouldn't you? It's in really good condition. Some nice colours and out the other side. Look at that. Isn't that lovely? stood back on the other side again it's obvious the abutment is missing on that side it's come down hasn't it we'll go back up top and have a little look at that yeah so back up top look we've got the abutment on this side I spin you around it's not present look it's gone and it's got all that ivy tree growth on it some old iron fencing down there look, or steel fencing yeah if I spin you around look you can see they're both present right we're going to push on towards Limby now and it is now known as the Limby Trail once we get across this bridge we'll see what else we can find it's been good so far hasn't it stay with me let's see what we can do
Is that something railway related? Got the reinforcing rods through the centre, look. And this at the top end. Could well be, you know. If you listen, you just heard a service depart in Newstead, heading towards Nottingham. That's how close to the railway line we are now. I'm hoping once we get away from these trees a little bit, I'll be able to get the drone up again. Because we're still a safe distance from the active line to do so. And see what it's like from above. You can't see it, but the Great Central used to be a short distance over in that direction. You've got some old foundations here, look. Brick building, plate layers hut. Too small to be a signal box. Around here, look. Yeah, it looks too narrow to be a signal box, but it could be some sort of plate layers hut that's been knocked down, couldn't it? A little further down, look, there's remains of something else. Got the brick look, and then what's left of a burnt out char of wood. Double track whip still, look, it's actually raining now. Quite hard, so that's also curtailed the drone currently, but I don't think we'll really be seeing much anyway. All I can tell you on the right is the active line is still there and there's plenty of fields on the left. You can see to my left hand side the cut out rock for the track bed. On the other side it's more an embankment but it probably has been cut out as well. Nice little bridge behind us, didn't expect that. Look at that. Must be farm access. Is this a culvert just here maybe? Something isn't it? Yeah, look at that. Had quite a bit of rain recently. So that flows off and beyond down there, almost in Limby. That was a bit of old sleeper built. Right next to that bridge. almost in Limby, the village is just a little way over there and we'll end up crossing the road through the village. The active line is just to my right, ever closer and that's the view going forwards. Limby Colliery had a really good life as well, 1883 through to I believe 1988. I think there's a nice country park or a walk going alongside it and you can also walk over the spore heaps too. And up here just on the right hand side we've got a nice little reminder of Limby Colliery. There it comes into view. Let's go and take a little look at that. So it has a nice little plaque on the side. Site of Limby Colliery 1873 to 1988. Reclaimed in 1992 to 94 by Nottinghamshire County Council. In the early 1960s Limby was recognised as Britain's champion pit and was the most efficient coal mine in Europe. Peak output was achieved in 1963 when 1,113 men produced 1.325 tonnes. That's million tonnes. Missed the million off the end. <laughs> Looks like it's only just been repainted too, doesn't it?
So our track bed, it crosses the B6 Hero 1. One. Right where the roundabout is, it takes you down to Limby Village or onto Waterloo Road. I had to take Waterloo Road just down there. That was just before the pit wheel memorial was for the colliery. But the track bed then reappears just here on this bend. And we do get to follow it for a little way longer as we head off towards Hucknall. So that's the view back to the track bed. So about two minutes walk up there is the roundabout and it takes you over the B6011. The footpath that you can see here wouldn't have taken me up there. It just goes off to the right just there. So I've not missed any out. So as an estate's the right, Waterloo Road to the other side and we've got a dead straight section of former track bed. I've now got to cross Waterloo Road and pick up a remnant of the former track bed. I don't think the path is actually really going to stick to the track bed, but it will be within a few feet. Let's get over there and we'll see where else it goes. So that's Waterloo Road out of the way, just cross that. That's where I'm going now. So we're kind of following the course of the track bed. I think we're going to cross another road at some point before we get to follow one last bit. And that is pretty much it. The track bed does go on to form Bishop's Way, heads on towards Hucknall Tesco, if you know where that is in the town centre. But other than that, I'll look forward to seeing you in another video. Well, I said that quite posh, didn't I? Another. I've been hanging around with Amy too long. <laughs> She'll have me for that. Um, like, subscribe, comment below. Thank you to all channel members. You can become one of them by clicking the join button somewhere down or up there. Any suggestions, places to go, drop them in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. Take care, bye-bye.